Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, today we study about coenzymes and cofactors. So, we all know that enzymes are biocatalysts which help us in uh, performing the reactions in our various metabolic reactions in our body at faster rate than usual. And uh, they also do this at a normal body temperature that means more or less at isothermic conditions. But what we have to also know for proper functioning of these catalysts called as enzymes, they also require the help of small molecules called as coenzymes and cofactors. So, today we let us learn about more about these molecules. So, before we doing so, we let us uh, learn the some basic terminologies which are required to understand this chapter. The first is with the substrate. Substrate is a molecule on which the enzyme is act, will act to perform a product. Next comes the EPO enzyme. What is this EPO enzyme? EPO enzyme is, is the protein part of the entire enzyme structure. All of you know pro enzymes are predominantly protein in nature, but if you closely look at the anatomy of this enzyme, it has one protein part and a non-protein part. The protein part is predominantly responsible for performing the action, but it also has a non-protein part. If you look at the protein part only, it is called as EPO enzyme, it is not a full structure. So, it is catalytically inactive if it is not associated with the, the so called non protein part, together only in total then only it will be active. So, the, now comes the non protein part, the non protein part by and large is called as prosthetic group. Okay. This is a non-protein part bound to this EPO enzyme. EPO enzyme is the protein part. Together the non-protein part which is the prosthetic group along with the protein part which is an EPO enzyme together they are called as holo enzyme which is the uh, catalytically functional part of the enzyme. Coming to the coenzyme, the non protein organic low molecular weight compound which is dialyzable substance associated with an enzyme is called as coenzyme. Please note it is an organic molecule, low molecular weight, non protein part is called as coenzyme. That means again this prosthetic group further can be divided into two parts, one is a coenzyme. If it has to be a coenzyme, it has to be an organic molecule. Okay. Similarly, if imagine it is a non-organic molecule, then it is called as cofactor. Cofactor is inorganic group which can bind to an enzyme in a transient manner or it can also sometimes binds to a substrate also, but it will both of which facilitate the reaction are called as cofactors. Now, let us study the role of this no prosthetic group or coenzymes and cofactor one by one. First, let us study about the role of coenzymes. So, coenzymes predominantly help in transport of various groups in various metabolic reaction from one substrate to other. So, most of these coenzymes are nothing but the vitamins or the micronutrient 
which we consume, which is a part of our balanced diet. As you can see in this entire uh, table, most of these uh, coenzymes listed here belong to the water soluble vitamins. There is one exception you can see which is highlighted in the red color, vitamin K. Vitamin K is the only fat soluble vitamin which acts as a coenzyme. Similarly, as you can see in the entire uh, table, all the coenzyme listed are actually a active form of a vitamin. You can see for example, thymine is a vitamin, the active coenzyme is thymine pyrophosphate, but only exception being the biotin. Biotin is a water soluble vitamin, but unlike any other water soluble vitamin, it does not require an activation to be, uh, uh, to be functional, it itself is an active molecule. Now, let us uh, study some more important concept in the table. You can see some of these uh, uh, coenzymes, they are linked with the electron transport. You can see electrons, the chemical group transferred is electrons. So, you can see that is NAD is electron transporter, that uh, FMN and FAD is again electron transporter. So, these electron transporter are closely associated with the, the electron transport chain in our mitochondria. Hence, they are closely linked to energy generation or ATP formation directly. So, they are come under a category of energy generating coenzymes. By itself, they does not have calorific value, but definitely they will make, uh, play a significant role in generation of ATP in mitochondria. One more important point to be noted here is some of this uh, coenzyme here like for example, NAD the full form being uh, uh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide something like that flavin mononucleotide or flavin adenine dinucleotide, one more being the coenzyme A. All these are called as nucleotide coenzymes. That means, so far we used to think that nucleotides are a part of DNA, RNA or genetic material, but this is very surprising or very inter to know that these nucleotides also play an additional role as a coenzyme in our metabolic reactions. Now, let us see how significant the role of this coenzyme is with an example. For example, you can see this is a typical presentation of a beriberi. Beriberi is uh, nothing but a deficiency manifestation of thymine pyrophosphate or vitamin B1. So, the thymine pyrophosphate plays a very important role in metabolism especially with respect to carbohydrate metabolism. So, let us see what can happen if a simple micronutrient like thymine is deficient in our diet. As you can see here, there are two main categories dry beriberi and wet beriberi. As you can see in dry beriberi, a simple nutrient can make a person like lose his sensation, even loss of tendon replaces and even loss of muscle function to the extent of having a paralysis in the legs or limbs. So, similarly, wet beriberi is one more category of this uh, disease, wherein it can cause uh, see, uh, breathlessness, dyspnea is a breathlessness with the edema with the card congestive cardiac failure. That means, it can cause a heart problem. How is that possible? A simple micronutrient can affect a functioning of an heart. This clearly indicates the importance of these coenzymes in our metabolism. Let us try to understand how such a small 
vitamin or thymine pyrophosphate can cause significant damage to our system. So, let us see this reaction. This is one of the important reaction in our metabolism. No matter what kind of nutrient you consume in your diet, whether it is a carbohydrate, whether it is a protein or lipid, this is one of the important entry reaction to TCA cycle that is conversion of pyruvate. All the nutrients most of it are converted to either pyruvate or acetyl CoA which further is processed in TCA cycle. The one of the important uh, entry reaction or the link reaction is the pyruvate converting to acetyl CoA by the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. This simple reaction conversion of pyruvate to acetyl CoA requires nearly 5 different coenzymes and especially the first reaction requires thymine pyrophosphate. Similar to this enzyme complex, there is one more important multi enzyme complex called as alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex in the TCA cycle. The TCA cycle being one of the important pathway for generating energy in our body. So, when there is a thymine deficiency is there, both of these reactions will not occur efficiently and there will be significant lack of ATP in our body. As you can know, a heart is a pump which pumps around the clock 24 by 7 and supplies blood to all our organs. It requires continuous source of ATP. So, whenever there is a drop in ATP formation, it can significantly affect the beating of the heart. Similarly, the most of the neurological problems including paralysis observed in uh, dry beriberi is uh, because of again lack of ATP. ATP is very much required for conduction of action potential and maintenance of negative membrane potential in myoneural junctions. When that is not effectively happening, it can lead to significant effect on neurological system. Hence, he can even present with the paralysis. In addition to thymine pyrophosphate, on this slide you can see there are two more vitamins which participates in the process that is coenzyme A that is nothing but an uh, active vitamin form of coenzyme form of pentothenic acid. Then we have riboflavin the active coenzyme form is flavin adenine dinucleotide and niacin the active form being nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. As you can see for single conversion to pyruvate to acetyl CoA, so many vitamins act as a coenzyme. So, coenzyme has a very significant role in our metabolic reactions. So, this is a table which contains various coenzymes. This is active coenzyme forms on the first uh, column. Second is the respect to vitamins from where they are formed and what are the groups they transport. I have highlighted some of these uh, coenzymes in yellow color which predominantly participate in energy generating process. There are some more vitamins even though they may not directly participate in energy generating process they are very much required for our survival. Let us see with this few examples. So, this is a one of the important reaction the rate limiting reaction of the heme synthesis all of you know this glycine combines with the succinyl CoA with the enzyme ALA synthase to form delta amino olivulinic acid. This is a reaction requires the coenzyme PLP or pyridoxal phosphate or vitamin B6. 
So, whenever there is a deficiency of this vitamin in our body, there is a significant decrease in heme formation and that to a certain extent he can suffer from severe anemia. Anemia you know that it is a decrease in hemoglobin concentration and all you know that hemoglobin is required for transport of oxygen in our body and which is that is not occurring effectively. Again oxygen is required for generation of ATP in our mitochondria. So, it indirectly can also affect energy generation. So, the person who is having deficiency of this vitamin can uh, suffer from microcytic hypochromic anemia. As you can see in this slide, this is a typical peripheral smear which shows hypochromia that means you can see the central hollow is a white color, normal person it is only one third of the RBC. In this condition it is almost two third of the RBC clearly indicating there is decrease in a hemoglobin concentration in the RBC. So, similarly this pyridoxal phosphate also in addition plays very significant role in some other reaction especially some neurotransmitter synthesis by decarboxylation. Two examples being histidine to histamine which is an important mediator of allergy, inflammation and pain in our body and dopa to dopamine which is a very important precursor for epinephrine and non-epinephrine the predominant neurotransmitter in our central nervous system. In addition to this, this pyridoxal phosphate also plays a significant role in amino acid transamination reactions. So, next example for coenzyme comes under the group called something called hematopoietic coenzyme. That means, they are synergistically help in formation of RBC. Let us understand how they will help. So, you can see in this reaction vitamin B12 along with the tetrahydrofolate that is folic acid, vitamin B12 is cobalamin which you all of you know. Both of them in this uh, synergistic reaction will help in the formation of DNA. How there is formation? They will convert the DUMP that is uh, dihydrouridine monophosphate to uh, TMP, the DTMP that is dihydrothymidine monophosphate which is one of the important base in the DNA structure. So, whenever these vitamins are not available in our body that can significantly affect the formation of TMP which is required for DNA synthesis. So, whenever the DNA synthesis is not this base is not available cell division will stop even though we have lot of proteins all the enzymes are available all the enzyme required for DNA replication is available DNA synthesis will stall and that lead to un un unusually large cells called megaloblast. Let us see with this picture. In also you can uh, uh, see here uh, there is a role for niacin in this entire picture which will further help to recover dihydrofolate to its active form called tetrahydrofolate so that this cycle will continue. So, this uh, reaction dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate by the folate reductase enzyme folate reductase is utilized for treatment of cancer by antifolate drugs like methotrexate they will specifically act on this step and inhibit the formation of tetrahydrofolate in our body hence they will inhibit the formation of DNA. So, they hence they will act as a anti cancer drugs. So, you can see here this is a typical uh, 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 slide which is shows the multiple lobe the polymorpho uh, this uh, WBC with multi lobar uh, nucleus that means this is a typical uh, sign of uh, uh, 
deficiency of folic acid or B12 or megaloblastic anemia where uh, because of that uh, uh, non-availability of thymine in our body, the cell division will not occur and uh, DNA also is not able to replicate properly because of uh, non-availability of thymine in our body and they lead to multilobar nucleus in the WBCs. So, one more important coenzyme is niacin. So, niacin uh, I already mentioned is one of the important energy generating vitamin or coenzyme. In addition to that, it has a very significant role in our body wherein it uh, neutralizes the free radicals or peroxides to uh, uh, harmless water in this cycle of glutathione reductase and glutathione peroxidase enzymes. Uh, this niacin plays a very significant role in neutralizing this free radical. So, especially in patient with the hemolytic anemia, unexplained reason, especially we will check for glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency because this enzyme is responsible for generating NADPH in our body. So, whenever this niacin is deficient, we can suffer from uh, severe hemolytic anemia. Hence, again it indirectly affects oxygen transport and also energy generation. So, in addition to that, sometimes NADPH has one more role wherein in especially in macrophages, it generates free radical called as hypochlorous acid which will help in killing the bacteria in our body. So, hence the formation of free radical and neutralization of free radical both reactions this coenzyme plays an important role. Now, let us concentrate so far we have studied about the coenzymes. Coenzymes I already mentioned they are organic low molecular weight substances associated with the enzyme or apoenzyme. Now, let us see about the inorganic uh, prosthetic groups which are called as cofactors. These cofactors are predominantly metal ions. Some of them are tightly bound to the enzyme, some are transiently bound to the enzyme or sometimes even the substrate, but they definitely will help in making the reaction effectively. So, I have specifically highlighted some of this uh, metal ions so that we will look a little bit more about try to study little bit more about them to understand the role of this cofactors in our metabolism. So, as you can see here the first bin which I mentioned here is a hexokinase or glucose 6 phosphatase enolase which requires magnesium ion for its action. So, this uh, whenever you say kinase this kinase is uh, one enzyme which helps to generate ATP in our body and especially like uh, uh, this reaction is one of the important reaction in glycolysis. So, whenever this reaction will not occur effectively which significantly can reduce the formation of ATP and uh, whenever there is a magnesium deficiency is there because glucose is a predominant source of energy for our body uh, because nearly 65 percent of our energy is coming from carbohydrates because of in our balanced diet predominant uh, uh, material which is there in our food is carbohydrates. So, whenever there is a problem in this kinase reaction because of a non-availability of magnesium which is a cofactor here that can significantly reduce the energy generation and especially a person with the having I already mentioned that our heart is one of the important organ which requires energy around the clock. So, whenever there is a magnesium deficiency is there it can cause irregular beating of the heart. So, whenever a cardiologist observes a person coming to his clinic with irregular pulse rate or irregular heartbeat 
or any heart problem, he is very keen to understand what is his magnesium level. Even till date, in our lab, we'll measure magnesium specifically for cardiologists. So, next uh, important uh, role for this magnesium or manganese is the reaction called as enolase. So, this is one of the important steps in glycolysis pathway. So, this is specifically highlighted here in this uh, slide because as you can see here uh, that uh, the enolase which converts the uh, uh, phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate is uh, one of the important reaction because uh, this knowledge of requirement of magnesium or manganese for this step is exploited especially when you want to measure glucose for a patient. Imagine that you walked into a hospital and uh, your nurse or your phlebotomist removes the blood, but the lab may be far off, far away. So, there will be a delay time before glucose can be measured in that sample. But what happens is there is a delay time cannot be avoided because logistically labs and uh, the phlebotomist may be far away. So, but we have to measure the glucose. If you do not stop the glucose utilization by the cells in the test tube, which is in the drawn blood, if blood is drawn into the test tube for testing, still the RBC and WBC are very much alive in the tube. They are still want the glucose. So, they can draw the existing glucose in the serum, the liquid part of the blood and if at all the delay is more than one hour, there is a significant fall in the blood glucose available. That means, a person on a borderline diabetic case may be falsely may be labeled as normal. If not, this step is not taken care of. If it is not taken care of, we may miss on a borderline diabetic case. So, how this can be done? Whenever we measure glucose, we will add fluoride to the tube. This fluoride will significantly interfere with the action of magnesium or manganese as shown here and wherein this entire reaction, the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate is blocked. Hence, glucose utilization by the cells present in the tube, test tube is blocked. So, whatever the glucose was present at the point of draw withdrawal from the body, same remains till it is measured. So, this is one of the important application of the knowledge of requirement of coenzymes for this reaction. So, next let us see one more example for importance of this metal ions or cofactors. This is a uh, picture which is shown here is a picture of cytochrome oxidase or electron transport chain complex 4. So, what happens here is as you know that whenever the electrons moves across the various complexes in electron transport chain, it requires the mediation of this metal ions either copper or iron or in the form of heme. Whenever this metal ion is having deficiency, deficiency of this they will act as a coenzyme or cofactors for the enzyme cytochrome oxidase which will effectively help in generation of ATP. So, whenever there is a lack of iron or a copper, in addition to transport of oxygen, iron is also required here for generation of ATP in the electron transport chain. So, whenever there is a copper on iron deficiency, there will be significant fall in formation of ATP in the electron transport chain. As you can see, copper and iron both are required for cytochrome oxidase as a coenzymes. So, whenever the iron deficiency is there, whenever copper deficiency is there, this enzyme function is significantly affected and hence it can significantly interfere with energy generation process and patient can present you with severe weakness. So, I hope uh, today we have learned what is the coenzymes, what are the cofactors, 
what you mean by apoenzyme, prosthetic groups and how they significantly influence the activity of the enzymes and their deficiencies, how they can significantly cause disease problems and sometimes the knowledge of these coenzymes, how we can exploit to our benefit for the treatment of diseases. Thank you for your patient attention.